Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India NPTEL lecture series on the calculus of variations. This is the sixth lecture of the series. Now, we will start uh, the uh, discussion on the main topics. We will start with the fundamental concepts of the calculus of variations. Here, uh, we as we had mentioned in the first lecture that uh, certain problems initiated uh, the study of uh, the calculus of variations. Uh, I would mention three main problems here. The first one was already mentioned uh, that was the Brachester Crone problem uh, introduced by or proposed by uh, John Bernoulli in 1696 and then subsequently there were many problems added to, to the discussion of uh, the calculus of variations uh, like uh, uh, geodesic finding of geodesics and then isoperimetric problems and certain problems of mechanics and physics. They were formulated as uh, optimization problems that means uh, finding minimal or maximal values of certain functionals. So, here I would mention here three main problems which initiated the study of the calculus of variations. The first one is uh, here finding uh, the length of uh, a f function like you have in the x y plane and there are two points a and b and a curve joining a smooth curve joining this we know that the length of this curve is the functional that is square root of integral over let us say this is the point x 1 and y 1 x 1 x 2 and this is the point x 1 y 1 and x 2 y 2 and so we need to find this integral x 1 to x 2 integral x 1 to x 2 of this d s where s is the arc length and it is given by x 1 to x 2 square root d x square plus d y square. This is a plane curve. So, we uh, have x and y variables only. In general, if we have three dimensional curve, then d s would be square root of d x square plus d y square plus d z square. So, here there are only two variables. So, we have this. Now, if we treat x as parameter and take y as a function of x, then if we take y as a function of x like this. So, this is y x for each x here the value this is x y comma y x point on the curve that is the graph of the curve. Then this L y is given by x 1 to x 2 square root. So, this becomes 1 here. So, x is a function of x itself that is the identity function and so d x by d x gives you 1 plus d y by d x square and this d x comes out here. Now, x as a function of t, y as a function of t and t has range t 1 less than t less than equal to t 2, then l y can be given as t 1 to t 2 square root then we take dx by dt square square plus dy by dt square and then this dt comes. So, we can use any of these uh, for as functional defining the length of the uh, curve y. So, here we need to find a curve such that the length is minimized and we know the answer is uh, the straight line joining 
these two points A and B. So, this is the uh, first elementary problem of the calculus of variations. The next one is we have seen that the surface area A s is given by we know that this is double integral over the surface s of the element surface area d s. Here you have three dimensional figure x, y, z and this is the surface bounded by the curve uh, let us say c here and this is surface s. So, here element area is d s and we have seen that this the, the outward normal uh, becomes uh, actually we need to fix which one to define as outward normal because there are uh, two directions one is the upper one and then the other one is uh, the in the down side uh, that is also the normal to this surface. So, which one to call outward here we take the convention that uh, we take this curve C as positively oriented when we take this as anti clockwise and if we consider this situation the same surface is here and we take uh, the positive direction of C like this then and the element d s is here then the normal will be downward like this. So, we have to see that uh, here the positive direction of C that means this is an oriented oriented surface the upper side here is taken like this when the uh, direction of this curve bounding the surface actually uh, we are considering the downside of the surface and then the positive direction is the reverse direction of the earlier one and so uh, an outward normal in then will be uh, the downside uh, downward normal to the uh, this one which we had considered just minus of this n cap here will be the n cap in this situation. So, we need to fix the orientation of the surface uh, at the beginning and then see what which side we are considering as the uh, positive side of the surface. So, here uh, this we had seen that d s is actually now here if we parameterize s as like position vector of this point p here like this. So, this is position vector that is r uh, here and it will be a function of two uh, parameters u v. So, we take x u comma v i plus y u comma v j plus z u v k that we had already uh, explained and then we know that this element area d s is nothing but r u cross r v absolute value of that d u d v. And uh, so, here now actually uh, we know that this one can take as so it and cap. So, this will be nothing but a s will be over this s and uh, absolute value of this n cap d s. Uh, so, this is what we have uh, as d s. Now, this n cap d s will then be now if you define this capital N as r u cross r v then we know that this is normal to the surface uh, because this r u and r v constitute the tangent plane and so r u cross r v gives you a normal to the plane described by uh, r u and r v vectors and so uh, this n cap is the unit normal which will be nothing but n cap this capital n cap n uh, uh, arrow over this absolute value of this vector n. So, that is what will be the unit vector in the direction of the outward normal. And so, we can see that then this capital N will be given by 
n cap absolute value of capital N and so therefore, this A s can be seen that the surface area will be not here uh, will be given in the projected one. Let us say this r is the projection of this on the u v plane rather here we are taking x y. So, we will take that a particular case here this is d this is a projection of the surface on x y plane and if we take projection on u v plane that we will denote by r. So, r and so this will be nothing but absolute value of capital N d u d v because absolute value of n cap is 1. So, that is what we will have where r is the projection of s on u v plane. So, that is what will be the formula for finding the surface area. In particular, if we take this case where surface is projected onto x y plane. So, this is the surface and it is projected on this x y plane like this d, this is the surface s and so in this case, in this special case our position vector r is given as x i plus y j and plus let us say this surface is given by uh, z as function of x y. For each x y here this gives you the point this p here which is uh, x y and z x y like this which we have already described earlier. So, this will be the position vector in this special case. Usually, if we take u v as parameters, then this x y will be functions of u uh, and v, but now we are taking x and y as itself as parameters and then z is a function of x and y. And then in this case, you can see that n which is nothing but r x, now u is x. So, r x cross r y and v is y here. So, this is nothing but i plus z x k cross product j plus z y k. So, this is the nothing but i j k and 1 uh, 0 z x here and 0 1 z y. So, that is uh, i times this 0 minus. So, minus z x i similarly j will give you minus z y k j and plus and then k component is 1 here k. So, this is what is actually capital N here in this situation. And if uh, we take the downside, then we will have to take uh, R y cross R x, which will be minus of N and will be pointed downwards. In the case, when we take the other as the, uh, the uh, reverse direction of this as uh, positive orientation, positive direction of C. So, then that will be the orientation of the surface will be just reverse that will be from the uh, downside of this uh, surface as we here. So, here in this case, uh, so we substitute in this formula that A s is equal to absolute value of this cap d u d v over this projection is now on r is now d this one over d and this is actually d x d y u and v are x and y respectively. So, this is nothing but and so absolute value of this gives you square root 
uh, 1 plus z x square plus z y square and d x d y. This is what we had already seen this formula. So, this is the proof of uh, that result given here. So, here in this case uh, this surface area where uh, it is taken x y taken as parameter the surface area is given by this formula and uh, so this is a function of so this here l of z you can take like this square root 1 plus z x square plus z y square d x d y. So, this is another uh, more general functional here. So, if you change z then uh, this number l is going to change l z is going to change. So, this is a functional uh, defined like this on higher dimensional spaces. So, I would mention now these other problems main problems that uh, first one was mentioned that which was Bratchestokon problem. which was described earlier it is uh, in the vertical plane you have to uh, take. So, we take uh, this one point A as the origin itself and the other point B like this and here we join this by a smooth curve uh, this y. So, this is x axis this is y axis and we take this point as the shifted to the origin itself and so this is the curve y x and the point is sliding under uh, gravity. So, we need to find the time which we have already seen that this time t will be given by which will be a function of y and it is integral x 1 to x 2. So, here anyway x 1 is 0. So, 0 to let us say 0 to some uh, x 1 here and this will be uh, d s over v and so we will have this 0 to x 1 d s we know that it is square root 1 plus y prime square d x and v here. Now, this v is we know that v square equal to u square plus twice g h. So, uh, u is 0 because it is uh, dropped from here uh, there is no force applied here initial it is just at rest. So, u can be u will, will be 0 and so that we can see that uh, using this formula we see that v this v is actually root 2 g y h height is actually taken now as y. So, substituting it here we see that t y comes out to be 0 to x 1 square root 1 plus y prime square d x over uh, root 1 we can take this constant out root 2 g and the whole like this y. So, this is the functional uh, which uh, for the Bratchett Stokon problem and we once we develop uh, sufficient machinery uh, to see that what are those functions which, uh, which optimize this which give the least value. Uh, we will see that the, the uh, solution of this problem is actually uh, cycloid. So, the y turns out to be cycloid y is actually cycloid this is what will be answered once we have sufficient tools developed for solving these problems. The other one is the problem of geodesics. This is the generalization of this problem. Here, 
in this uh, we have uh, plane uh, uh, surface here uh, the plane x y and there are two points and we want to find the uh, minimal length which, uh, joining these two points uh, and we see that in this case answer will be straight line but in the more general problem like this we have for example here the surface s is like this its projection is d here in this case and this uh, z is given as function of x y now here we take two points on this surface a b and then uh, the curves joining this on this surface so this is a point a here this point b and this is the curve uh, join these two points we want to find uh, the uh, minimal uh, the uh, the curve which has minimal length and uh, these uh, this curve has to be on the surface and uh, this should have minimal length uh, that means you take any neighboring curve it, its length will be more than this one such curves are called geodesics so in, uh, in the plain thing geodesics are straight lines here uh, like on spheres uh, these are grid circles and so on we can have various other uh, like cones on that also there are uh, nice geodesics which we will be discussing in uh, subsequent uh, subsequent lectures so here how do we formulate this as the problem of the calculus of variations so here we know that again uh, this length formula will be given by uh, so length of uh, the curve so here on this we can parameterize this curve like uh, x of t y of t and z of t like this so let us say and z as and t has the range between t 1 to t 2. So, that is what will be parametrically this uh, curve will be described by, by these three equations and so then uh, L will be given by t 1 to t 2 here uh, d s and that is t 1 to t 2 square root d x square plus d y square plus d z square and so in terms of parameters t 1 to t 2. So, d x by d t square plus d y by d t square plus d z by d t square d t and then these x y z must satisfy this z t must be uh, z of x t y t like this and so from this d z by d t must be z x partial derivative with respect to x and then d x by d t z y d y by d t. So, like this. Uh, so, here uh, there is a restriction that these points x y z must lie on the surface and that will be described by this equation and so we can substitute it here and so this L can be given as. So, uh, this will be a function of z anyway and so t 1 to t 2 here we will write short notations like x dot dot means d x by d t x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square is uh, this z x x dot plus z y y dot square square root d t and these z is again. So, z x since z is a function of x y. So, z x and z y are also functions of x y. So, this is like t 1 to t 2 and square root of. So, some functional like this of you have x y x dot y dot d t. Here t is not appearing explicitly, uh, but in certain t may appear explicitly. So, this is uh, 
more general case which we had considered we had considered only uh, like this x1 to x2 f x y y dash dx here there are more dependent variables y t is independent here uh, so we can put t also here although this is not explicitly function of t so there are t is independent variable x is a function of t y is a function of t and x dot y dot so there are more dependent variables here uh, there is only one independent variable more dependent variables x and y so this is a situation which we will be dealing with uh, later so this is the problem of finding geodesics on surfaces and then the third one is isoperimetric problem which was mentioned earlier so this was considered in ancient time by greeks where uh, areas of uh, certain surfaces were to be found uh, such that the bound their boundaries are of fixed length so that is what is known as isoperimetric problem iso means same parameter their param uh, parameters should be same so here uh, you have situation like this certain curve is given of fixed length and this is the uh, area here so this is the domain d let's say in xy plane and this c is having fixed length so uh, we need to optimize this uh, area of d such that and the length of c does not change. So, that is what is isoparametric problem. We know the answer is uh, disc here, uh, d has to be, so this c has to be a circle and d has to be the inside area of that, that means it is a disc. And uh, so, that is the answer which we will be getting when we have uh, sufficient tools to study these problems. So, here the, how would you pose this? We have seen that this area can be given area of D by using that Green's theorem result. We can see that it is given by half of integral over C uh, y uh, d x minus x d y uh, like this. So, here and uh, this length is uh, fixed here C. So, what we again take uh, this as a c as a parametric uh, thing. So, we this we will if we take x as function of t, y as function of t, then this area of d is given by 1 by 2 so t 1 to t 2. Here, yeah, this range is. is y t d x by d t minus x t d y by d t it is x d y so this is sorry this is x d y or minus of this we can put here so minus of this so, this is actually x d y minus y d x. So, we can put minus sign here like this. So, uh, here uh, we will have this one and then the length of this uh, c curve is given uh, that is t 1 to t 2 and square root d x by d t or the square plus d y by d t or the square. So, this is what is to be uh, done here and so uh, we use here Lagrange's method of uh, multipliers uh, and so uh, we can take the functional like this t 1 to t 2 here y x dot minus x y dot 
minus of this. So, let us put that minus sign inside. So, x y dot minus y x dot plus lambda square root x dot square plus y dot square and d t. So, this will be the functional which we will consider here lambda will be uh, Lagrange's multiplier which it is undetermined it will have to be determined. We need to find this uh, x and y as well as lambda here. So, this can be taken as a functional f here and again you have only t is not appearing explicitly f as a function of uh, lambda also is there x y x dot y dot d t. So, this kind of function optimizing. So, these are three main problems actually created lot of interest in the uh, theory of the calculus of variations. And so, here now what are the tools which we use in order to see that uh, to answer these questions what are those curves we optimize which optimize these uh, uh, functionals. So, here we need to find certain conditions which are known as necessary conditions. Uh, it it is an Euler equation actually known as Euler's condition which is to be satisfied by that. So, that is what we will be uh, deriving in these lectures. And so, let us first understand uh, how we are going to consider the variations of uh, these functions here. Now, first let us see that how we do it in case of functions. So, here we have a function f on that interval that is say a b to r and so this is the case here a b and function is like this and around x we can see that so, such that x plus delta x is also in that interval. So, x and x plus delta x being in this a plus a comma b in this interval. So, then f of x plus delta x minus f of x sh should be if this function is differentiable then we say that uh, this has to be like this a delta x plus some uh, beta which is a function of x delta x times delta x. So, here so we consider here a function f uh, from an a comma b to r and uh, we, this is the situation here uh, this is a b and x is an interior point here and x plus delta x is also in that interval. So, delta x is the increment in x. So, if f is differentiable, uh, then we uh, in fact, f is differentiable if and only if the following holds uh, that f of x plus delta x minus f of x is uh, a times delta x a is a constant here not a function of x or delta x uh, and uh, plus this term uh, beta x comma delta x delta x here this beta x delta x this tends to 0 as uh, delta x tends to 0. So, we can see that if we divide by delta x. Uh, so, we know that f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x it, it gives you a plus beta x delta x and this goes to a as uh, delta x tends to 0. So, uh, clearly then uh, a has to be f prime x. So, this is the linear part in the incre uh, increment here see f x is uh, this delta x is the increment in x and this is delta f given by f of x plus delta x minus uh, f x. So, this increment in f is actually a times delta x plus beta x comma delta x delta x. This function beta is assumed to satisfy this condition. So, f is differentiable if and only if uh, this holds 
this is let us say 6.1. So, 6.1 holds if and only if uh, f is differentiable and we can see that we divide by this delta x here. So, this delta f by delta x is equal to this and uh, this tends to a as uh, delta x tends to 0. Therefore, we know that this is used for derivative f prime. Uh, so, it follows that a has uh, f prime x and so uh, here this part is called linear part in the increment because it is linear in delta x. So, and that so this a or rather so therefore, this delta f is actually f prime x delta x plus beta x comma delta x delta x. Here uh, this is the linear part in the increment in the increment of f and so this is what is called differential and so uh, this is called differential and denoted by d f. So, d f is actually f prime x and delta x. So, this is the differential of f and this clearly prime x is the differential coefficient because the coefficient of the differential delta x here because now if you take f x equal to x we know that d x equal to delta x and so we can replace this if we take this then uh, d x is equal to delta x for this uh, independent variable uh, this increment is same thing as differential and so d f equal to f prime x uh, d x. So, that is what we frequently use that we just say that dividing by d x uh, we get actually which is a layman's language of saying that uh, you divide by d x and you get f prime x. So, but in the case of two variables what happens that if you have f as a function of uh, r 2 or rather a domain in r 2 to r and then you take any point x y in x y and x plus delta x y plus delta y these points in d then f of x plus delta x. So, delta f here again comma y plus delta y minus f of x y is given by in the same manner it will be a delta x plus b delta y plus some beta x y delta x square root of delta x square plus delta y square times square root of delta x square plus delta y square such that this beta x y square root delta x square plus delta y square goes to 0 as square root this delta x square plus delta y square goes to 0. So, we say that f is differentiable if the following happens that this is let us say this is 6.2. So, 6.2 holds if and only if f is differentiable and we can again see that if we divide by delta x and fix uh, delta y uh, uh, do not we do not change delta y only delta x is changing and delta x tends to 0. Then if you consider this like this delta x then we have a plus b delta y delta x plus beta x y square root delta x square plus delta y square and here uh, times square root delta x square plus delta y square delta x. So, this goes to a 
uh, see we take let us say we take delta y to be 0. So, take delta y to be 0, then we see that de delta f over delta x is a plus beta x y delta x and then and like this and you have. So, the, this goes to 0, this goes to a as delta x tends to 0, which is the particular case because delta y uh, we have taken 0 here. So, this condition will be satisfied and so, uh, this is what is actually. So, a now this is nothing but del f by del x, the partial del. So, a has to be then uh, this goes to in the limit limit of delta x tending to 0. Okay. So, let me put it here. Limit delta x tending to 0 of this. So, this is actually equal to Similarly, we have delta f or delta y will turn out to be b. So, we can see that here this delta f is actually f x partial derivative with delta x plus f y delta y plus beta x y square root x square plus delta y square square root delta x square plus delta y square. And we have this as delta x is same thing as d x plus f y d y plus beta x y square root delta x square plus delta y square square root delta x square plus delta y square. And so, this, this is the linear part in the increment linear part in the increment because uh, this is linear in this delta x which is nothing but dx delta y these are independent variables and therefore uh, delta x will be same thing as dx which we have seen and uh, delta y will be dy, uh, dy here and so uh, this df will be given so, that linear part is called the differential, called the differential and so, d f is given by f x d x plus f y d y. So, that is the situation for functions. Now, let us see in the case of, of functionals. So, we have i y here. Now, we give increment to like we gave increment to x we give increment uh, we give increment to y and what happens to uh, the increment to i so this is the functional i here so if we consider this y plus delta y so what is that delta y we mean and what is the functional this and then uh, delta i will be given by i y plus delta y like this minus i y. So, how do we define this? That is what is to be seen. What is this delta y here? So, what we do here? Let us say we have and there are these two points a and b and this is the curve y x and this is the neighboring curve y 1 x. So, these y 1 y x and y 1 x these are joining these two points a and b. So, this is the point x 0 y 0 or x 1 y 1 and this is point x 2 y 2 and these are two functions y x and let us say let us not use y 1 here. Let us say this is y tilde the neighboring curve here. So, this delta y as a uh, function of x, this is the difference, this 
y tilde x minus y x. So, at each point here, this is x 1, this is x 2 here and so, at this point x difference here y x is here, y tilde x is here and y x is here. So, this is the this difference of these ordinates uh, is what is delta y x. So, as x moves from here to here, we get this various values of delta y. So, this is the increment in y and now what happens this i which will be a function of uh, y plus delta y now here i of y, y plus delta y and minus i y. So, that is what will be denoted as the increment in the functional or variation variation in the functional. In the same manner uh, the situation here. So, uh, how do we define the here the actually things here like we had x uh, going to x plus delta x the difference is delta x. Now, here we have seen that this delta y is there we are saying that this y tilde x is near to this in what sense that is what is to be made precise here, because uh, this functional, the, because this functional uh, x 1 to x 2, here you have f x y x and y prime x. So, it involves y prime x also y x as well as y prime x. So, what is the variation in y prime x that is to be seen? For example, if you take uh, this situation that this is point A and B. Now, these two curves like this, if you consider or this the other one, one curve is like this and the other curve is going like this. So, although the, this is also close to the let us say this is the original curve y x is this and this is y tilde x. So, y x is the straight one, this one is y x and the curved one is y tilde x. So, we see that uh, though this delta y x is y tilde x minus y x here and in this case also we will have delta y x uh, will be the same thing here and so we see that here the variation will be too much in the derivative. So, here although this if you define this delta y prime x will be y prime x minus y so y tilde prime x minus y prime x. So, here in this case both these will be close enough. So, if this is less than epsilon let us say then this will also be similar to the epsilon distance, but here uh, this thing will be uh, difference will be too much in the case when we take derivatives here. So, we need to define the closeness in the sense of order of proximity. So, that is what we will be considering now. So, we define here the concept of proximity of order k. We say that, we say that y tilde x close to each other in the 0 order proximity if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists delta greater than 0 such that if x minus x dash. So, here this or 
let me write okay So, this y x absolute value of this y tilde x minus y x then epsilon provided uh, here. Okay. So, this is called epsilon order of proximity. Uh, if for every epsilon there is we say that y x and uh, are close to epsilon. Uh, to epsilon close rather close to each other in zero order of point if if we have the following thing for all x here so, this rather we can say maximum over x less than x 1 less than x 2, this is less than epsilon. Now, we, we generalize this, we say that y tilde x and y x are epsilon close. to each other in first one order proximity or rather first order proximity if maximum of x 1 less than x less than x 2, this y tilde x minus y x is less than epsilon also and maximum x 1 less than x x 2 y tilde prime x y prime x is also less than epsilon. So, this can be generalized and so, k order proximity similarly y tilde and y r epsilon close in k th order proximity if this y tilde jth derivative x minus y jth derivative x is less than epsilon for j equal to 0 1 2 up to k 0 order 0 means then the function itself so that is what so they are not only close like this see these are only zero order close not the first order whereas this is first order close, first order proximity of these curves y and y uh, tilde. So, like this uh, we will be considering the continue various concepts continuity and differentiability as we consider the uh, for functions, we will be defining the uh, variations of uh, functionals in the next lecture. Thank you very much for viewing this.